here's a problem I just made up that is going to show you how to do a an energy problem and then use work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. And so we got this block, it's 10 kilograms, and it's moving. It's moving with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. And it is a height 5 meters above this level area here. And we want to know, given that, this, that it's all frictionless except for this rough area, how far will it move? What distance D will it move before it comes to a stop if the coefficient of friction on this area is 0.6? So the first thing we have to do is we have to look here and we have to decide what kind of energies does it have and then what is the total energy? Well, since it's moving, we know it has kinetic. And since it's a, it is a distance or a height h above this level area, it also has potential gravitational. So what we have to do is figure out what those numbers are. So it's one half mv squared plus mgh is going to equal the total energy, and that total energy will never change. So one half times ten kilograms times 10 meters per second, I'm going to square that, plus 10 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared times 5 meters. And when I add all those together, I'm going to get, um, whoops, didn't mean to do that. So if, I'm, if I multiply these together, I end up getting 500 joules. I add these here, I end up getting 500 joules for the potential. The total energy is 1,000 joules. All right. So when it gets down here to the place right here before the rough area where H equals 0, because that's our, that's our reference area, that's where H equals 0, H up here equals 5, H down equals 0, all of the energy right here is going to be kinetic only. Guess how much kinetic there is? A thousand joules. I don't have to do any calculations. Whatever the total energy is, that's what the um, kinetic energy will be there. <clears throat> now, that is my initial kinetic energy. My final kinetic energy is going to be zero because friction is going to do work and take all of the energy away. So how we do that is we write down the equation work equals change in kinetic energy. Well, um, kinetic change of kinetic energy is going to be final minus initial. Final, of course, is going to be zero. And then work, we know, equals force times distance times cosine of theta. So what we have, what kind of force do we have? Well, if we look at this block, if we just draw a diagram of it, we have the force of gravity down, that's 100 newtons. We have the normal force up, which is also going to be equal to 100 newtons. And then we have this frictional force back. That's the only force um, that's slowing it down and taking energy away. So this force actually is a frictional force times distance d, I don't know, um, and then times cosine of 180 is what it's going to be is because it's moving to the right but friction's to the left equals negative ki. Since to the right is positive, this frictional force is going to be negative. So how do I find the frictional force? I can't find it. It's mu times the normal force, which is going to be 0 0.6 times 100 newtons. And that's going to be 60 newtons. All right? So let's plug our numbers in. 60 newtons which is negative, times my unknown d, don't know that, cosine of 180 degrees, and actually, here's, here's the deal. I don't need to include this negative if I include 180. The 180 just makes that negative. So I can either tell myself friction's negative, or I can just put the number in and then do, do cosine of 180. You can do both, though, because then it cancels out. Um, the negative on the left, which we want to cancel out the negative over here. This is going to equal 1,000 joules because we know that.
was the initial kinetic energy from the conservation energy. So basically we have a thousand, um, negative a thousand divided by negative 60, which is going to be positive, of course. And that's going to be D is equal to 16.7 meters. So that's how far that block would move if friction was that big and it was had that much energy because friction would have to take away a thousand joules of energy and so it's 60 times d times cosine 180 if i want to write this out that's going to be six negative 60 d equals 1000 joules uh, ne hold on. negative 1000 joules divide both sides by negative 60 and you get equal to 16.7 and that's how you do a work kinetic energy problem